Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and a big welcome to the channel. Finally, I have the chance to cover a game from this year's Ultibox tournament. One thing that is surprising though, is the number of people taking part. There are only six of them. The star of the show has to be Ali Reza. If you can take Fabi down and then level on, you gotta take this guy seriously. He hasn't done very well in the blitz, but in time, he will. Therefore, if you underestimate anyone, you will be in for the surprise of your life. Firuja is here to stay. He has played some amazing games. And mark my words, he will one day go for that world title. His game today is not about Reza, but Christoph. Right now, he's scraping the very bottom of the barrel. And he suffered one defeat after another. And guess what? Not only he's up against Magnus, but what chance does he stand? Magnus gets himself into trouble very easily, but he's also able to come out of it as fast. Today, we're looking at the round five game between Christoph and Magnus. As per title, there is a big bang here. And while the likelihood Magnus loses is tiny, imagine if he lost. This will be his first classical game he loses after an extremely long time. The last time Magnus lost was, well, was when he faced Mamidiarov, and that's a couple of years back. Kristoff has this side of the board and kicks things off with an for opening, and Magnus answers with a Kara. By now, this is no surprise. He played it in his splits against Wesley. So let's see who's going to play it now. D4 led to this, and after the queenside knight was developed, Magnus takes here, and Ops for the Tartakova. Christoph gladly traded the knight. And what he achieves is to land Magnus with a double pawn. You know, there is a big difference how you choose to capture. And if you want to know the whys, we really need to roll back to one of our previous videos. Let's say for now, Magnus did this the right way around. C3, supporting the center, led to this special entry, and Magnus would want to castle anytime soon. Bishop d3 got the world champ to get his king to safety, and check this sneaky move out by Christoph. He's going straight away for the kill. Okay, maybe not. First of all, Magnus started things off with this check, and when the knight was summoned into block, with Magnus now pushing his pawn forward, if Christoph wants to check the king, by all means he can. Christoph is looking to castle too. He didn't rush things though. He first developed his bishop, and it would be actually very interesting to see if Christoph chooses to castle on the queen's side. I explained this before. Games are far more interesting and far more fiery if you castle on opposite sides. Right now, both options are open. Knight d7, and here we have it, Christoph opts for long. And as soon as Magnus saw what side Christoph castled, he also kick-started the attack with this guy. Christoph immediately, well, <laughs> it wasn't immediately. If you ignore the 90 minutes, decided on how to respond to this move. 90 minutes and four seconds later, he went for this very detailed, if you like, and calculated push. Magnus here played this quite fast. He pushed on two, basically offering a pawn. This guy in b5 really needs to come off. And this is exactly what Christoph did. Magnus has handed over a pawn just to be able to get a strong counter what do you call it? Counterplay, that's the word. He lined up his rook here, 
Here is where Christoph stops to think things over. Nearly seven minutes later, he decides to come in and cover in this way. And again, Magnus chases after this bishop for the second time running. Bishop back to safety. Got this rook move going in by Magnus. And there's a good reason for this response. We will see shortly why. Christoph must have been happy with this move. What he did was to reposition his knight here. And therefore, his next stop is his outpost in f5. Unless Magnus stops him. There are one, two... Three ways to stop the knights from penetrating into f5, but I guess two of them do not work. Magnus 2 repositioned his knight here, and if knight f5, this bishop on c8 will have him collected. Okay, it was a knight f5, but nothing stopped Christoph chasing after this bishop via this avenue. Okay, let's see why rook e7. Was of interest because this was the moment Magnus revealed everything. With this rook repositioning, he was therefore looking to hit this guy off. But since this move stopped basically everything, this is how Christoph played it. Magnus came in with this very interesting, confusing attack. Christoph was on full alert. He made sure this rook was not staying here. Why and how? Well, he backed off his bishop to attack him. If you retreat this rook, then you would have lost the tempo. There was a reason why this rook came here. I guess this is the time to see why. Magnus hands over his rook, and with this rook coming off, this was the idea. When Magnus applied this pin, he was confident he could manage. You need to be very careful how you play this variation. Many things can go wrong. If you go for f3, if you take and capture with the queen, go for queen d7, and the queen side becomes an issue. Queen back to c2, queen b7, and Magnus will get a very big deal out of this. I'm not going to go through this opening, but guess what happens when this pawn on c4 comes off? Take the knight, and this is how you get checkmated. So when this pin on the knight appeared, Christoph got this rook into cover. And with Magnus pushing this pawn even further, Christoph decides to stop him with this defensive gesture. He didn't have to, though. Knight back to g6. And this game is just about to explode. How do we know? Look at the signs, guys. It's like having a race pitch full of race cars. I could have used a different example, but you get the picture. After rookie three, this knight was repositioned here. And if we didn't really explain what rookie three does, rookie three needs no explanation. However, Christoph waited with this repositioning, he charged after this bishop first. And you know, this one forces Magnus to act somehow. Not wanting to open up the file to his king, he backs off with this bishop. And here Christoph gets his king to move east. I can only assume he didn't want the knight to come in to be able to slip in with a check. When Magnus attacked this knight, there are two ways you can look at this. Christoph traded the knight to the bishop by capturing this pawn. Only gains the pawn, but this bishop now is in danger. When Magnus applied this check, this pawn came to the rescue. There is so much potential from both sides. With Magnus having gone for this exchange on a4, was all this worth it? He knows this game inside out, and this may explain this opening today. He doesn't normally use the Karo, but with Magnus, you never know. He has tried nearly every single opening there is, and this is what makes him a great player. Magnus, with the exchange down, appears to still have a great position. 
if he manages to get the queen to find a way to slip into the queen side, he might have something. So what he did was to get the queen to move right into this outpost. And if Christoph can defend, he will. He immediately used the bishop to attack the queen. Magnus repositioned her here, and via this queen responds. What would queen g2 do? Rook e1, and if you start grabbing pawns, the party will continue with queen c2. This pawn also disappears, and just to cut a long story short, this is what I looked at moments before Magnus went for it. There is no need to come back, because this is exactly how both players played it. Christoph was about to produce the Big Bang, hence the title of today's game. He has a great advantage. He knows his dance better, but Magnus is like the Big Bad Wolf. You knock him down, and before you know it, he's right up on his feet. He came in with this check, and Magnus did even need to calculate here. If you get the rooks to come off after king h7, can you see how to lose a queen in no time? Come on guys, fish it out. Start with this check. The rook is removed. Grab here with a check. And the rest is not very difficult to work out. So Magnus was about to drop rook number two, but at least he retains his queen. King h7 dropped the last rook two, and Christoph is about to achieve something no one was able to manage for a very long time. It's been years when Magnus lost his last classical game. Magnus is going to fight on though. He took with a check. The queen stepped into block. And Magnus here goes on to remove another pawn with a subsequent check. King West, and with Magnus going for pawn number three, Is he in any position to determine the outcome of this game? One beauty of a response which Christoph could have gone for is this quick move to the back rank. He didn't though, so would he blame himself for missing it? Well, if he loses, he might. This was a risky one, so with this position, he was taking zero risks. He lifted the rook to the third, Magnus used this bishop to bring in the knight to check. And rather than hand over the rook for two minor pieces, talking of crazy moves, Christoph brings his king to the second. Takes, takes, and Magnus knew he might, <laughs> he might need to resign soon. Through this queen response, Magnus is one tricky player. He's down to basically nothing, but he still finds those impossible moves. If you grab this bishop, the rook also comes off with a check, but even this will not save him. Christoph had something else in mind. He left everything in and delivered this check, where Magnus blasted ahead with this cover. When Christopher applied this pin, Magnus linked in with this check. The king moved out, Magnus knows he will need a miracle to even draw. Magnus is moving on autopilot here. He used this pawn to attack the queen. Christoph came in with this repositioning and challenging one. Magnus rejects with this move. And if Christoph can find any way to even sacrifice one of the two rooks he has, he will be more than happy to do this. Even if you take this bishop for the rook, it's still job done. Christoph came up with this response. Magnus began to chase after this rook. And of course, with this rook lining up on this outpost, Christoph is looking at a mating one. Queen g6 stopping this, got the rook to step back, and when Magnus kicked in with this check, I personally think he could have waited a bit longer. King to the second, got this guy going. And if Christoph is not careful, Magnus can now go on to checkmate. So this position is as sharp as it comes.
And here Kristoff has just had enough and slashes and he hopes for that checkmate. He could easily have gotten this king to hit the rim, but what the heck, he got rid of this bishop. And when this recapture took place, Christoph retreats the rook here. Magnus from this point on is just playing for the sake of playing. One by one, these pawns will disappear. Queen in with a check. The queen steps back and Magnus has to be the person with all the humour. He squeezed in this check. The king eliminated this guy and by this check, when the king backed off, this guy also disappeared. Right after this guy also bit the dust. And if only Magnus finds a way to get this guy on the king's side to run. Queen g3 led to this answer. The king was checked, and with the king making his way to the third, we saw this check. The king made it to the fourth, another check pursued. When this king marched to the fifth, I guess Christoph was having plenty of fun. Remember, he's all the way at the bottom of the standings, but right now, He's on a mission and he's just about to do something no one else was and is able to do since 2018 when Mami Diarov managed to beat Magnus in Bill. Through this check, another pawn came off. Magnus rushed the pawn to the fifth and the real fun, the real fun move is how Christoph played it. He pushed on with this guy. Magnus too went for it. When this check appeared. The king was flushed forward and via this infiltration if you like this had to be it. King to the edge of the board and even a miracle will not be enough. Christoph had to calculate this very fast. He sneaked in with this check and it wasn't takes here which would have made plenty of sense under the circumstances but this move. When this move appeared this was it, and the moment of truth. Only Kristoff beats the unbeatable. That finally ends the incredible winning Magnus streak. And by now, I had lost count of how many games Magnus came winning up until this point. So, entirely undefeated, and Kristoff Duda makes the impossible possible. This was not just a Kristoff victory, but it's the way he played it. Magnus messed up big time in the opening when he launched that pawn to b5. And this is what it takes. One tiny error. And this is how you lose a game such as this one. So you know what everyone will be talking about tomorrow. No one cares. No one really cares what happened on the other boards. And trust me, plenty has happened. Now, this victory by Christoph pushes Magnus down the standings. And boy, do the standings at the top shift a lot. Well, to come from me, so until the time comes, your chess puzzle are here, and whatever you do, safety always first. Mm -hmm.